So I've been on this earth for almost 22 years. And in that time, I have never had sleep paralysis until last night. Last night was my first time ever experiencing sleep paralysis. Now, for those of you who don't know what sleep paralysis is, it's pretty much in the name, okay? It's you being paralyzed while you're asleep. Now, I'm not gonna go into the scientific terminology or the scientific reasons why this happens. You can do that research for yourself. I'll give it to you in simple terms. Your mind is awake and your body is asleep. You're conscious of your surroundings or you're at least somewhat conscious of your surroundings, but your body cannot move. No matter how much you try to will yourself to move, you cannot move. Now, like I said, I have never experienced this before until last night, and it was a pretty surreal experience. I typically don't have dreams like that. I don't really have nightmares and things like that. I don't know why, I guess I'm just a pretty happy person in general, but last night I was sleeping, obviously, and I'm not sure if I woke up or if this happened within my dream, all I know is that immediately in my mind, I knew that I was going through sleep paralysis. And the reason why I knew that is because I couldn't move. Okay, I tried to move my arms and I couldn't. I tried to roll over, nothing was happening. Nothing was happening. Now, it was kind of strange because usually when people have sleep paralysis, they see demons and shadows and things like that. Now me, I've heard those stories. So I kept my eyes closed. I'm not ashamed to admit that. I'm 21 years old, I'm a grown man. I kept my eyes closed. I was not concerned with what was around me at that time. Because what good is there in seeing what's around me if I can't do anything about it? I can't run away. I can't fight. I can't do anything. So I might as well just keep my eyes closed. And that is precisely what I did. Now, despite me being conscious enough to know not to open my eyes, I still experienced some very strange sensations. Now, typically when people have sleep paralysis, they talk about having a feeling of pressure on their chest. I was sleeping on my stomach, so I felt it on my upper back, and it felt very, very weird. It wasn't a hard pressure. It didn't impede my breathing, but it was definitely uncomfortable. And I heard this sound, this very, very strong wind noise, almost like there was a hurricane outside, something like that. And I felt something, or someone, I don't know, blowing on the back of my neck. And like I said, I wasn't necessarily scared because I didn't open my eyes, but I didn't feel comfortable in that situation. I felt very, very uneasy. I wasn't terrified. I didn't feel like I was in imminent danger, but I didn't feel it necessary to spend any more time in that state than absolutely necessary. So I remembered something that I had heard a while back that if you have sleep paralysis, you should try to wiggle your toes. And if you do that, eventually you'll wake up. And I did that. And I don't know how long it took. Your perception of time isn't really the same when you're asleep, obviously, but it worked. It worked. And I woke up and I was a little bit spooked, but I was more so intrigued. And the reason why I was intrigued is because I have experienced the exact opposite of sleep paralysis. Okay, I used to sleepwalk when I was a kid. A lot of people don't know that. My OG subscribers, you might remember me telling these stories on my live streams in the past. But I used to sleepwalk as a kid, specifically between the ages of seven and nine, when we first moved into the house that I ended up growing up in. I used to sleepwalk. Now, it was always a pretty innocent thing. It's just I would fall asleep on my bed and wake up in my parents' bed, and I didn't know how I'd get there. There were a few times that I did some pretty unsettling things, I'm not going to lie. Okay, I remember on one occasion specifically, I woke up in my parents' room in the middle of the night, probably two, three in the morning, staring at my mom, just staring at her by her bedside. Now, I have to give her credit. Okay, she handled the situation pretty well. She woke up and she was calm. Me, if I woke up in the middle of the night and there was just somebody staring at me by my bedside, I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's my kid. I don't care if it's my girl, if I have a girl, I don't care. They got to go or I got to go. Somebody has to leave. I can't live in that type of environment. I can't sleep in that type of environment. I just can't do it. But that sort of thing happened multiple times. Now, this video is about probably the most unsettling, but also the most life-changing and empowering time that that happened. Now, at the time, I believe I was about seven or eight. 
it was probably one of my first few times sleepwalking, but it definitely stuck out to me. Now, one thing about me is that I've always been a night owl, okay? Even as a kid, I was always a night owl. I was always the type of kid to stay up until two, three, four in the morning, even on school nights. It's just the way that my mind operated. I don't know why, I just always liked being up late at night. So on this particular day, I remember watching TV in my room. It was really, really late at night, probably two or three in the morning. And I had the lights on, which I know it sounds like it's pretty irrelevant to the story, but usually I wouldn't fall asleep with the lights on. Usually I would fall asleep with the lights off, but my TV on because I was scared of the dark. So I would have my TV on, but this time I guess I just got really, really tired out of nowhere and I fell asleep on my bed without really realizing it. And this is usually how sleepwalking would happen for me, is that I would fall asleep without realizing that I fell asleep. Because sleepwalking is the exact opposite of sleep paralysis. It's your mind being asleep, but your body being awake, and you acting out your dreams. So in this particular case, I fell asleep on my bed. After I fell asleep, I started walking down the hallway. Okay, at some point or another, I woke up or woke up and started walking down the hallway unconsciously. Now, this is where things start to get a little bit weird. Okay, I'm gonna put some B-roll footage on the screen of the way that my house is situated, my parents' house, okay, my childhood home. So as you can see, this empty space right here, okay, you can see this empty space. There's also a hallway, okay? So there's an empty space adjacent to the hallway upstairs, which leads from my bedroom to my parents' bedroom. Now, in this particular case, I remember watching myself walk down this hallway. I was watching myself walk down, bro, I know it sounds weird, okay, I know it sounds weird, and honestly, for a while, I thought that it was just a dream. I thought that I had just dreamt it. But as I would later find out, it wasn't a dream. Or if it was a dream, it was a very, very intricate, complex dream that I still don't really have an explanation for. Now, I watched myself walk down the hallway. Usually, like I said, I would wake up by my parents' bedside. And usually my dad would sleep through this because he's a pretty heavy sleeper. And my mom would be the one to wake up and she'd usually just pull me into bed with them. But in this particular case, as soon as I opened the door to my parents' room, me and my dad both woke up simultaneously. Now it's not like I was making a lot of noise or anything like that, especially enough noise to wake me up because I usually would sleep through that anyways but me and my dad woke up simultaneously. Now I know what you may be thinking. Okay, Jordan, it was probably a coincidence. And that's what I thought too for the longest time because as a kid, you don't really think about these things. You don't really dig too deep into the why. You just look at it as an isolated experience. You don't even think about it. You usually just kind of block these things out. But a few years later, probably when I was 14, 15, 16, somewhere around there, I told the story to my parents or I just brought it back up because my dad, of course, remembered it because he didn't know why he woke up either. But when I told him about the story, he told me something that really, really shook me up. He told me that he knew I was coming because he saw me walking down the hallway while he was asleep. Now, you guys have to understand, okay, my dad is not the type of person to just sit there and make stories up. Okay, this man told me that Santa wasn't real when I was like three years old. And even if for some reason he did want to play a joke on me, I never told him that. I never told him that I had seen myself walk down the hallway. Okay, so for him to tell me that, it shook me up. And you should have seen the look on his face when I told him that I experienced the same thing. Okay, because that's one of those things that you cannot rationalize. There's no way to sit here and rationalize that experience. Because you can't say that I'm crazy. You can't say that he's crazy because we both experienced it at the same time. Now, at the time, I didn't really know what astral projection was. These are things that I would learn about later on in my life. But looking back on it, I know that we definitely astral projected. Now, how we shared that experience, that's a much, much deeper discussion for a different day. Okay, but a lot of you guys probably wonder where the basis of my beliefs come from why I believe the things that I do, why I believe in the concept of oneness, why I believe in spirituality, why I believe that everything is energy and that physical reality is an illusion. That experience right there was pretty much the basis for all of that.